brigade of the army of God just lining up and getting ready to go in to take over territory as we call out the name of Jesus and we just celebrate all of his attributes. He's just a great God. Can y'all agree? He's just a great God. Hallelujah. Our God is great. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory. Come on. Great God. Great God. Great God. Come on. Come on. Great God. 
is a great God. He really is a great God. Come on, y'all. Hey, he really is a great God. He really is a great God. Come on, y'all. He really is a great God. Come on. He really is a great God. Come on. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. That's who you are. Come on, y'all. That's who you are. Come on. 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 Serenade him. That's who you are. Come on. That's who you are. Come on. That's who you are. Come on. He really is. He really is a great God. God. Come on. He really is a great God. Come on. He really he is. Come on. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. And give him praise, honor, and glory if you believe it. Come on. I'm giving him a little slow this morning. Come on. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. When you think about all over your life, come on. It was all in him. He really is a great God. Come on. Glory. Hallelujah. We just want to continue to let God know how great he is to us. Hallelujah. Because he really is a great God.
Welcome to Faith Christian Center, the place where God lives. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should have been getting a shout in for your grandbabies, for your cousins, for your aunts, for your uncles. Come on. For your friends. Come on. We got the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. And at this time, we'll make room for our announcements. Amen. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Our announcements are as follows. If you know someone unable to watch our live online streams, they can call our dedicated number to listen to every 10 a.m. Sunday service and every 7 p.m. Wednesday service by calling our new number, 267-807-9601, and entering the new code, 620542. Hashtag. Please remember to mute your, mute your phone by pressing start six on your phone. We look forward to connecting with you. It's praying time, it's praying time, it's praying time. Join us on our prayer call as we intercede for souls, our country, and the nations every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. Our new number is 267-807-9601 and into the new code 620-542 pound sign. Again, the new number is 267-807-9601 and the new access code is 620-542. Hashtag. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. is our midweek Bible study. Where you get your faith charged. Connect with us on Facebook or Instagram for a life changing word. Let's get plugged in. Let's talk marriage with the manlies. It's every Thursday at 8 p.m. for marriage restoration and relationship building. Log on to Ward Manley the Seconds or Kim Manley's Facebook pages to tune in. Friday night fire. Every fourth Friday, we come together at Faith Christian Center to intercede on behalf of the Reedsville and Rockingham County area for the body of Christ and our nation. Our next Friday night fire is September 24, 2021 at 7 p.m. Today is Family Connection Sunday. We have great food and fellowship after service. Faith Christian Center is open. To attend our services, please go to our Faith Christian Center Facebook page, click on About, and click on the Like to Register. Follow the prompts, and we look forward to seeing you in the house. These are our announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, y'all do better than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I am excited, excited, excited about this day. And I give God all the glory and all the honor for the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Come on. We get, we're in the house of the Lord. And he has been good and he has been faithful. Amen. Amen. We want you to avail yourself to all of the announcements, uh, specifically the announcement about our morning prayer. We want you to join on. This is praying time, praying time, praying time. We want to make sure that we are praying and interceding and making way for God's entrance into the earth realm. And so we want you to join us in our prayer call every morning, every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. And then again on Saturday at 9 a.m. we have morning prayer. Amen. So we want you to join us for that. We've been doing that now for over a year and a half, almost two years. Uh, and so we want to continue praying. We're not going to let up off the enemy's neck. We're not going to let up off of the enemy's back. Come on, we're going to keep our foot in his back and our foot on his neck. Come on, we're going to let him know that he is defeated and we are victorious. Amen and amen. So we want you to join in on that 
with us on every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. and again on Saturday at 9 a.m. Well, it's giving time here at Bay Christian Center. Amen. I love it when we get excited about giving. Giving is a blessing. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I don't know about you, when there's a blessing attached to something, that means there's some good coming. Come on, the Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. And so every blessing brings something good. Come on, y'all. And so when you give, you're getting ready to get in position to receive a blessing. Hallelujah. Because you are getting ready to get something back that's better than what you gave. Yes, indeed. You're getting something back that's better than what you gave. Hallelujah. And so we want you to get positioned and get ready to give on this morning. Some of you all may say, I'm going to give my tithe on this morning. I'm going to bring my tithe to the storehouse on this morning. And I want to put it in good ground. Faith Christian Center is good ground. And so we want you to put your tithe here. That it may open up, it may be a place in the storehouse that it may open up a window. Come on. And pour you out a blessing that there will be not room enough to receive. And so if you're going to tithe on this morning, you can see the ways on the screen. We want you to be able to come on this morning and sow a seed into the ground. We're getting ready. We just had a yard sale not too uh, last weekend. And this weekend, we're getting ready to do some things to get ready to, again, prepare to bless our, our community. And so we want you to be a part of the blessing. Come on. When you give, you're part of the blessing. When you give, you're participating in being a blessing to somebody else. And so this morning, I want you to join in and sow a seed into Faith Christian Center to help us to bless our community. Amen. And so I want some of you all this morning, some of you all can give a $25 seed, some of you can give $50, some of you can give a $100 seed, whatever seed God gives on you or lays on your heart to give, I want you to put that in the ground. You're going to help us bless some community, bless our families uh, in just a few more weeks. We're going to be a blessing to them. And so we want you to bless us and help us to bless them in the name of Jesus. And so this morning, I want you to also consider putting an offering in the ground to give God a thank you for waking you up this morning. Come on, somebody. A thank you for giving you the operation of your limbs on this morning. Come on. A thank you that, that, that he's just kept you alive. Come on. A thank you that he didn't let destruction hit your home. Come on. Thank you. Come on. There's nothing better than giving God a thank you. Thank you that says, Lord, my heart is still open. Thank you says, Lord, I'm still waiting on you. Thank you says, Lord, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You're still worthy of all the praise. That's what a thank you says. And so you put your offering in the ground. You say, Lord, I thank you. And so this morning, I want you to put your thank you offering in the ground in foldable form. And you can do it by three ways. We have our cash app, which is dollar sign, capital FCC, lowercase church. Or you can give it at our Givelify, which is Faith Christian Center, Reedsville. Or you can give it at our text to give, which is 336-585-8830. We want you to be able to put it in the ground on this morning. I pray that the blessing of the Lord will overtake you because you're giving. Yes. I pray that the blessing of the Lord would run you down because you're giving. I pray that the blessing of the Lord would find you and complete, completely submerge you in everything good. Come on. I believe that when you give, the blessings come behind you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I pray, I pray that God will bless you 30, 60, 100 fold blessing upon you for every seed that you're putting in the ground on this day. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for every gift and every giver. Father, we pray that you return it back to them 30, 60, 100 fold. We pray that you would cause their, their hands to be full. We pray, God, that they would have no lack on any area. And so, God, we thank you now that when we give, the Bible says, well, blessed to give than to receive. So, Father, we thank you that there's a blessing attached to our giving. And so, because we believe and we stand on your word, Father, we thank you now that we receive it. We thank you that it's ours. We obtain it and we hold firm to it. So, Father, thank you now for receiving our gifts and returning our gifts as you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may give now. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and bless God for the gifts and the givers. Come on, the Bible says he gives seed to the soul, bread to eat. Hallelujah. You're not going to lack when you're a giver. Yeah, you're not going to lack when you're a giver. Glory to God. Givers don't lack. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, we're getting ready for the word of God. Yes. This is the meat, y'all. This is the table. Yes. Come on, we get ready to eat good this morning. Yes. And so at this time, I want us to prepare our hearts to receive our pastor, 
Hallelujah. My husband, my sweetie pie, my sugar mom. Come yes. on, you know, he's coming this morning. He's going to share the word of the Lord. Why don't you put your hands together and bless the Lord for our pastor. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Come on. And everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Come on now, let's do better than that. Come on, God is worthy. Amen. He is worthy of all our praise. Amen. And for that, I am grateful and honored. To be here on this morning. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to Faith Christian Center. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. We want to bless those who are streaming on this oh, morning. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. So I'm thankful for God allowing us to come once again mm -hmm. to his house. His house. Amen. Amen. There's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Once again, for allow us to come together by your spirit. It's not by might, nor it's by power, but it's always by your spirit. I decrease on this morning that you would increase, Lord God. Bless your people on this morning, Lord God. May they receive your word, Father. And may the service count for all eternity. That we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Again, welcome everyone. Amen. And so this morning, I'm going to be truthful, and I'm not going to be nice, if that's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, now, what, what would you prefer, me to be truthful or me to be nice? Truthful. Somebody said truth. Amen. And guess what? That's what I plan on doing, being truthful on this morning. Because the Bible said that they that know the truth, the truth will set you free. Amen. And so with that being said, let's go right into the word of God. We're going to go into Deuteronomy chapter 30, beginning at verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30, beginning at verse 19. Because this, all that's going on in our world today. The most important thing is truth. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. With all that is going on in our society, in our nation, the most important thing that we need today is truth. Right. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, I look like I'm going to have to do some Come work on, this amen. morning. That's all right. I got my own amen with me. Oh, okay, amen. here we go. Today, I'm giving you a choice of two ways. It says, and I ask heaven and earth to be witnesses of your choice. That's personal. You can choose life or death. The first choice will bring a blessing. The other will bring a curse. So, choose life then you and your children will live. I'm going to read it again. Today, I'm giving you a choice of two ways. Remember that, two ways. And I ask heaven and earth to be witnesses of your choice. Two destinations, two locations, two choices. Mm -hmm. You can choose life or death. The first choice will bring a blessing. The other will bring a curse. So choose life. So he's saying, choose life, choose me, so you can be blessed. Then you and your children will live. So if I want to give a title for this morning's message, it's The Power of Choice. The Power of Choice. So we see here, there are two choices we have to make. There's no alternative. There are two decisions we have to make as humans. One is to live. Secondly, not to live. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody in their right mind would choose the first one. Right. At least I would think so, because we all want to live. 
when as we look a little further, they both have an expected opposite outcome. In other words, there's an expected opposite outcome from the choice. One is a blessing, the other is a curse. And whether you know or not, there's a responsibility that comes with making a choice. In other words, we just can't make choices and not expect anything to come along with the choice. Whether it's a good consequence or whether it's a bad consequence. In essence, we are held responsible for how we choose. Mm. So let's look at this thing called a choice. A choice is an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. In other words, the thing that you choose, or should I say, the thing that you choose when you don't have any limits. That's choices. I can decide to take this or I can decide to take that. In other words, there are no limits. But when there's a limit to something, it's a restriction. Come on. Right. Come on. Hmm. Come on. Which means you don't have a choice. Mm. Hmm. Well. Ah. But when we look at Deuteronomy 30 and 19, the Lord is saying that I put before you life and death. Mm -hmm. Which means you have a choice to make. That's the power that you have. You can decide. But as you're making your decision, I want you to know my preference mm -hmm. in you making that decision. Mm -hmm. Why? Because while a preference is a suggested choice, right. mm -hmm. uh, God said, I'm going to give you my preference. This is what I suggest for you. But the decision is still up to you. When you think about it, we as human beings, from all the other creatures on the Come earth, on. were created with the power to make a decision. Right. In other words, we were created with a free will. Mm -hmm. The ability to choose. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? right? We can choose who to marry. We can choose where to live. We can choose where to work. On, we can choose where to travel. We can choose what we want to drive. Right. We can choose what we want to wear. Come on, Come on. That's the power of choice. Mm -hmm. But when you think about all the other creations, like animals, they don't have that power. They are subject to their environment. They cannot choose their environment. They are put in their environment. So listen to this. Anytime you and I are robbed of a choice, that's not a God. Come on here. That is evil. Let me say that again. Anytime you and I are robbed of the ability to make a decision, that is not a God. Yes, I said it. It's not a God. Because that's not how you and I were created. Why? Because John Tennyson said, "What well, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Come on here. In other words, the thief comes to rob us of, a, of our given ability to choose. But what did Jesus say? I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So you and I were created to make an intelligent decision. Now, whether you and I make that decision, guess what? The choice is up to us. That's why he said, choose this day who you will serve. I gave you my preference. 
but the decision is still up to you. Yes. Because guess what? When you are able to make a decision, listen to this. This blessed me. When you are able to make a decision, you are held responsible. When you are not, someone else is held responsible. When you are held against your will, you're not held responsible. Someone else is. Well, for instance, is a kidnapper or the one who's being kidnapped, are they held responsible for being kidnapped? No, the one who is the kidnapper is being held responsible. Right, that's right, that's right. Right. I'm not sure that's the best analogy, but that's just in my mind. Because God never forces a decision. He leads and guides in making a decision. Let me say that again. God never forces in making a decision. In other words, he will never force you and I to make a decision. He leads and guides us in making a decision. That's the difference. So now, let's look at some life and death decisions in the word of God. In other words, the power to make a choice. Number one, this is what it says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, we must never stop looking to Jesus. He is the leader of our faith. In other words, the author. And he is the one who makes our faith complete. Then it says, he suffered death on a cross, but he accepted the shame of the cross as it were nothing. Because why? Because of the joy he could see waiting for him. And now he is sitting at the right side of God's throne. Guess what? That was a life decision that resulted in a blessing. Because had not Jesus went to the cross, there would be no, no forgiveness of sin. So he didn't let what he had to endure stop him. from fulfilling the will of God. But he had to make a decision. He had to make a choice. Not my will, but thy will be done. Then it's, then it's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 2 said this, but the Holy Spirit explicitly uh, and unmistakably declares that in light of time, or in the last days, some will turn away from the faith. That sounds like a decision to me. That sounds like a choice to me. In other words, you're not where you once were. And it was based on a decision. Turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirit and doctrines of demons. Anything that's deceitful, guess what? It has to be evil. Come on here. Amen. Teach. Because it's deceitful. Come on. Here. It's not good. Come on. Teach Pastor. And then it says, misled by hypocrisy of liars whose conscience are sealed with branding iron. In other words, a branding iron is like symbol, a mark. Come on here. In other words, you know those. Why? They've been marked out. Leaving them incapable of ethical functioning. That's a curse to me. So in other words, they will not think right. The things they do will not be normal. Unethical. Incapable of ethical thinking, functioning, reasoning. You tell me how ethical it is for a man to marry another man. That's not true. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's not ethical. For a woman to lie with women, that's not ethical. That's not normal. Uh, number two, a 
this power of choice that we all have to make. It's a life and death situation. Why? Because he said in Deuteronomy, I put before you. And heaven is witnessing it, and earth as well. Yeah. Matthew 7, verse 13 to 14 says this. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad and easy to travel is the path that leads to destruction yeah. and eternal loss. Wow, that's two things. Destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads to the way or everlasting life. And there are few who find it. Another translation says it like this. You enter or you can enter true life only through the narrow gate. The gate to hell. Yes, the gate to hell. The gate to hell is very wide. Mm. And there is plenty of room on the road that leads there. Then it says many people go that way. Why? Because of this decision they have made. Mm. But the gate that opens the way to true life is narrow. And the road that leads there is hard to follow. Only a few people find it. So when I begin to look at that scripture, I, I begin to ponder on it. I said, wow. You have two different gates here. You have a wide one, then you have a narrow one. So I begin to ask the question in my, my, my mind, why is the gate that is wide, why? What came to my mind is that that gate never closes. Wow. It's constantly expanding. Mm. Because people continue going into that gate. So therefore, it cannot close. The Bible said hell has enlarged itself. So it's constantly expanding. Oh, God. Come on here. That's why it's very wide. Teach that. Teach. But think about something that is narrow. It's hard to get to. It's hard to, you gotta squeeze in it. Matter of fact, it's uncomfortable. Jesus. Mm. It's not comfortable when something is narrow. Come on. And that's the difference. Many rather have it easy because it's comfortable. But listen to this. The harder the struggle, the greater the reward. Mm. Because it will always be easy to do what is not right mm -hmm. than to do what is right. Yes. Yes. Teach that. Somebody calls you out of your name. Mm -hmm. What is the natural response? For you to call them out of their name. That's mm -hmm. easy. That's easy. But the difficult thing is for you to say God bless you. Keep walking. Mm -hmm. Don't say nothing. Smile on your face. Mm -hmm. That's Difficult. Number three, as it pertains to this life and death decision, choice. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21 says this The wrong things the sinful self does are clear. Committing sexual sin, being morally bad, doing all kinds of shameful things, worshiping false gods taking part in witchcraft, hating people, causing trouble, being jealous, angry, or selfish. Mm. Some of y'all said, do I do that? Mm. Oh, yeah. Causing people to argue and divide into separate groups, being filled with envy, getting drunk, having wild parties, doing other things like this. Then it says, I warn you before. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. How many warnings do you need? The people who do these things will not have a part in God's kingdom. Then it says, on the contrary, but the fruit that produces in a person life yes. is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these kinds of 
Then we go to Galatians 6, 7 through 8. It says, if you think you can fool God, you are fooling your secrets. You will harvest what you plant. If you live to satisfy your sinful self, the harvest you will get from that will be eternal death. But if you live to please the spirit, your harvest from the spirit will be eternal life. Guess what? The decision is up to you and I. Because whatever you do will come back to you. Whatever you want, or should I say whatever you don't, won't. Whatever you do will come back to you. Yes. Whatever you don't, won't. I do good, guess what? Good is coming back. Right. I do bad, bad is coming back. But then the thought came to my mind, as I said, whatever you don't do won't come back to you. So some people say, well, I'm good if I don't do anything. Mm. I, I hate to bust your bubble on that one. Because the Bible said the man went to hell for doing nothing. nothing. <laughs> Jesus. But the fact he did nothing indicated he did something. Come on, yeah. And that something was nothing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh, my God. So we are always doing something, even though it appears like it's nothing. Your indecisiveness is still a decision. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Why sit we here and die? That's a decision. Number four. I'm bringing this to a close. Another life and death decision. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 2 and 4 says it like this. Remember this. There are some terrible times coming in the last days. This is the Holy Spirit reminding us. He says people will love only themselves and money. Instead of loving God, they will love pleasure. So in other words, they have decided to have an alternative, mm -hmm. which is themselves. Mm -hmm. I'd rather love me than God. That's a decision. Teach us. Mm -hmm. Teach us. Because listen to this. In the end, a decision will be made based or in the end, a decision will be made based on the choice we make. Yes. Which is judgment. And judgment is the result of a decision. Wow. Mm. Let me say that again. In the end, a decision will be made based on the decision. In other words, the choice that you and I make which will result in judgment which in essence is a decision. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 5 and 10 says it like this, and we bring it to a close. For we believers will be called to account mm -hmm. and must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be repaid for what has been done in the body. How you and I live on this earth. Whether it was good or bad, that is, each will be held responsible yes. for his action. Not for someone else's action. In other words, I can't blame you for what I do. And you can't blame me for what you do. That's right. That's right. It said, each will be held responsible for his actions, purposes, goals, motives, the use or misuse of his time, opportunities, and abilities. Wow. So God is not excluding anything. Wow. 
But just think about it. Now begin to look at this thing. It says, for we believers. So if the believers are going to be held responsible, what is it for the unbelievers? So it's an indication nobody is getting away. But again, don't forget the process. I prefer that you choose life. Because I believe it's in Isaiah 14 and 16. Let me say, thank you. Let me say it like this. Those who choose or those who go to heaven are small people who worship a big God. Those who go to hell are big people who worship a small devil. Wow. Because the Bible says, is this the man that caused all the havoc it caused the nations to tremble. Is this the man? Surely this could not be the man who caused all this on the earth. After all, we were expecting something else. Because do you remember going up watching the Wizard of Oz? Yes. And that big voice oh, that you were hearing on the Wizard of Oz. And we thought it was some big right. giant. But to find out it was just a little midget. I love it. <laughs> yes. That's what the Bible says. Surely this could not be the one who caused all the habit. Who caused the nation to tremble? Who brought kingdoms down? Surely this could not be him. Yes. Because in the end. Listen to this here. In the end, we determine our destiny. Yeah, based on my decision. We determine our destiny. God confirms it with the judgment. You say that again. In the end, we determine our destiny. God just confirms it with the judgment. Which is the decision. So today, you have a decision to make. You have it already. Because in Romans, I believe in chapter 1, verse 26 or so, it says that. They did not want to retain God in their hearts. That's a decision. Mm -hmm. And so God gave them up to do whatever was imaginable in their hearts. It was based on a decision. So what is your decision today? Because the Bible says that choose whom this day you will serve. We have to make a decision. There is no other way around. We can choose to worship God. We can choose not to worship God. We can choose to believe that he is God. We can choose to believe that he's not God. But we all have to make a decision. Yeah. And that's the power of making a decision. And let me say this. There's freedom in making decisions. But there is power that comes along in making that decision because if truth is attached to it, then there's freedom. So today, what is your decision? God has chosen you when you choose him. 
Because the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's you. And you say, Pastor, I don't know the Lord Jesus. I've never confessed him as my Lord and Savior. And today, I want to make that decision to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. If that's you, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I'm a sinner, that I've fallen short of your standing for my life. I ask that you forgive me my sins. I repent of my sins. And ask that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Guess what? If you said that from your heart, you are now saved. But the Bible says you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Because with the heart, man bleeds unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made until salvation. We celebrate you. We bless the Lord for you. Amen. For making that decision. That's the power of a choice. To choose life that you and your children may live. Amen. 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 And we thank God for you on this morning. We pray the Lord has spoken to you.